I um, felt strongly led of the Lord to uh, decree some blessings over our partners. So I want to call this uh, prophetic prayers for ministry partners, partners, people that are connected. And uh, it's also a wise appeal to many to become partners because a lot of people, you know, listen, but they never got the, now I got to say from the outset, I, my first thought was to pray for people, not to, uh, you know, raise an offering or anything. But in the midst of this thing, we can do both at the same time. A lot of people listen, they see, but they don't understand the purpose of sowing. God can make you a money master. And you know something? When you have the ability to, to decree uh, over uh, money or over things, the power of your possession of them, all of them hear you. Now, how much you're going to get at one time, I don't know. The more, the better, you know. But let me tell you something. All things have ears, and all things respond to the laws of God. So let's pray from the outset. Lord, we thank you for the grace. We thank you for the power to, to, to bless people. I'm going to bless people here. Lord, you told me years ago in uh, Genesis 12:3 the story of Abraham from Genesis 12, 1, in those several verses, in the 12th chapter of how God, you spoke to him to listen to your voice and obey you and go to a new place and follow you. And when he, when he did that, he also received a covenant commission and command from Jehovah, you, you Lord Jehovah yourself, to be a bless a master of of blessings and not only the fact that he would always pray uh, all these things and speak them but just the fact that the covenant of god said who blesses you are blessed and who curses you are cursed one of the appearances of the lord jesus christ uh, when he appeared to me it's in one of the, one of the visitations i've had i've had several and if you want another reference point of a man of God that's had that is Kenneth Hagin. Kenneth Hagin had the Lord appear to him and teach him things and speak things to him and give him, you know, apostolic commands for what's going, what was going to happen in the earth. He even wrote books about it. One of his books is called I Believe in Visions. And in Open Visions, he describes how Jesus came to him and told him things. And it's happened to me the same way, you know. But in one of the visitations I had from the Lord, he said to me, my son Thomas, as I send you out into the earth, into the world to minister, to prophesy over the nations of the world, uh, I give this command, who blesses you, I'll bless them. And who curses you, I'll curse them. Who blesses you, I'll bless. Who curses you, I'll curse. This is powerful. And I've seen, I've seen both of them work. So when you bless me to, by showing honor, not to me as a man, but to the servant of God, to the prophet of God, as unto the Lord, the Lord takes notice and will react. There were a bunch of women sitting at a table in a conference, a big conference that just happened this week. And one lady, she wanted to take me to uh, uh, the VV. I, how many V's, VVIP tent, and, you know, she just was concerned about me. And none of the other people did that, but she did that. And as I was walking out, I felt the anointing upon me, and I pointed at her, and I said, Dear, you showed, you, you expressed honor to me, and I prophesy over your financial life that things will go higher for you. She's in business. And she was like, Amen. And all the other ladies were sitting around just looking. They didn't get the same decree. Why? Because they didn't do the same thing. When you want something you never had, you've got to do something you've never done. Show honor 
Express honor and uh, God's honor will, will find you back. Uh, Genesis 8.22 The law of seed time and harvest is always there as long as the earth remains. When you sow, you'll reap. So this thing about seed is very powerful. And I bless the people in Jesus' name that have sown God into this grace and anointing as I've traveled around the earth. I bless you today in Jesus' name. And I want to say inversely, I might as well complete the verse because it's, it's, it's biblical. Uh, those that have cursed me or tried to curse me, they're cursed. The curse goes back to them. Think about that. So what, what side of the equation do you want to be on? You want to be on the right side of things. So the people say, the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Mungo no muema, God is good all the time. Yeah, absolutely. But there are ways you can carry on to get blessed. I talk about some of these principles in my book, Prophetic Keys of Successful Living. So today, I'm not doing a teaching. I, I don't have time. I have some other schedules, and I'm, doing a, I'm in the middle of a few other things. But I just felt the Spirit of the Lord say to me a while back today, earlier, to, to, to just come on here and bless people that have been partners and to talk about the power of partnership. Partnership is two becoming one in a mission, in a vision. In, in doing something meaningful together. So like, what do you, what do you get from that? You're gonna get blessed <laughs> if you participate with Heaven's program. This is how it works. Really? Okay. okay. So, partnership is powerful. Is everybody a partner? Absolutely not. And I want to also include the, you know, all of the people that have ever helped me and done anything good with me, anybody that has done good to me, and anybody that has received a, a blessing from me that was also honoring. You know, some people that I help uh, did not show any reciprocation of it. In fact, I was reminded uh, a while ago of the scripture that says, the, um, Jesus Jesus, you think Jesus is so nice all the time. He even likened people like to pigs. That's very nice. That's lovely, isn't it? He said like you, you, you cast pearls before swine. What is that talking about? Physical pigs? What, what the heck does a physical pig have to do with a church? They don't go to church. You know, they trample uh, the pearls under their feet. And, and some people do that, you know. You bless them. And they show you disdain and treachery and no respect. That's bad. So guess what? That's not a partner. You know, because when someone is good, they're always going to give out blessings to everyone and everyone gets in the way of that. But who responds back? Jesus even said, the one that came back and said, thank you, he was made whole, but the others had just been touched. You know, maybe they had the affliction again. You don't know. But the one was made permanently well. That guy who came, one of the ten who came back in the gospel to say thank you to Jesus, he never had that problem again. He was made whole. W-H-O-L-E. Which means it's completely done. Not halfway done. Remember the guy that said, I see men walking as trees, and that he couldn't see them clearly yet, so Jesus prayed for him a second time. That was like, kind of like the second prayer. 
He said, well, not 10 cleansed, but only one came back to say thank you. I say that this one is made permanently well and whole. But he didn't say that for the other nine. So it's kind of like getting the second prayer from Jesus to clear the rest of the vision. So uh, if you have millions of people in one city, are all partners? Absolutely not. If you have 8 billion people on the earth and hundreds of millions of people or however many does, uh, dozens of millions of people in a country are, are all going to be partners of a work? No. All the people in the church and all the people that have heard you and known you, are they partners? No, they're not. I know one uh, evangelist friend, he, he, had, he said he had about 300, then he went to 3,000. Then now he's at about 15,000 ministry partners, monthly partners that give an offering every month, a tithe, a seed, or an offering every month into his anointing, to his ministry. How do they know if they do that? Why? Because these people have called the office and uh, or signed up online and registered as partners. So the Lord is the Lord is is touched me to, to talk about this. First to pray for people that have been good to me already. So anyone that I was good to also that that responded well back and came into like a covenant friendship or relationship, they uh they stepped into a divine encounter. But not everybody that you meet does that. So the ones that have are, 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 are the remnant. And I want to pray for those right now. Father, thank you for the touch of heaven. I decree blessings, miracles, financial increase, new open doors, divine health, alleviation of problems, total deliverance, an amazing rude awakening, as we would call it, to what's wrong in their own life. <clears throat> revelation and the light coming on in their mind and imagination that they can see what it is you've ordained for them and that you'll get them past every wrong person, every wrong situation, every wrong atmosphere, every wrong environment and get them to the right place called there where everything's going to flourish and there's provi where there's provision, where there's blessings, where there's, you know, I thought I was fine, but my throat, oh my God. Where there's provision, where there's an outpouring of all kinds of good things. In Jesus' name, favor, new connections, new contacts, new friends, all kinds of new things and new people to be a blessing to them. In Jesus' name, let those doors be open now. Why? Do I pray that? Do I speak that over a devil, a rebel of a person who's a, a killer? a destroyer, a thief, a liar, a crook? No. The only hope for them is to get bashed to and maybe come into repentance that uh, they can be saved and for their own benefit. Because <laughs> the alternative to that is what? Hellfire. That's not good for anyone. Jesus said, I don't want anybody to perish. I wish that none would. But of course they do every day. You know, you look around and you see some people that how evil they are. And the things they do. It's like, you are a devil. How, how can someone be that evil? You know? And, and then if you die in the commission of that kind of behavior in life, I mean, what, what, what heaven are you going to go to? Where are you going? Which side of the fence are you on? Now, I want to speak to people that uh, would, would, would connect. And I'll talk more about this. And sometimes I get so in the flow of teaching and bringing messages. And, but I have to just, I have to just, uh, I, I think I have to do this more often. Just stop that. I'm not saying I won't do it. I'll always be doing that. I'll always, always be doing that. But take time to just like make intimate one-on-one -on -one moments where I can pray for people and bless them and receive them as into the family, into the tribe, as partners of, 
of this work that's covering the entire earth with the prophetic words from the mind of God, which is a very holy thing, you know. God is, when he speaks, his words have creative power to make things happen, and uh, we need to see it more and more. Partnership, what does it mean? How can two walk together except they're in agreement? God sent them out two by, Jesus sent them out two by two. The 70 was 35, 35 sets of two that were also going to evangelize. And um, the animals were two by two. Why? Because they needed male and female to reproduce. So everything was in twos, companies of two. So one plus one equals two, but one plus one also equals one because you're one together in agreement with something. And what is it, Matthew 18, 19, that said, uh, come together in agreement, and the thing that you put your hand to in agreement together will, will come to pass. Then there's the principle of nothing just happens by itself. Things happen in conjunction together with other people. Things just don't happen. Nothing just happens by chance. It, it happens by design. Then there's, a, there's, there's the, ch the, choice, the choice factory that you, you choose to be in the industry of choosing something to make something happen. And that we, we get from that this principle, destiny is not left up to chance, but it's a matter of choice. Destiny is not left up to chance, chance or, you know, circumstance or coincidence or whatever, but it's a matter of choice. You choose it, and the thing that you want to see happen will also choose you. The principle also is, the principle also is, is this. The thing that you're looking for is also looking for you. You're looking for something, you're thinking about something, think, and then sometimes you could be thinking, there's nobody like that, there's no, you, uh, you could think, uh, is it there what I want? Yeah, it is. Because your desire going out is also magnetically, what do they call it, the law of magnetism, the law of attraction, you know, all these terminologies people use about it. But it's true, what you want is also looking for you. Jesus said in Matthew 7, ask, seek, and knock, and then the door will be open. Well, first you'll be answered. You'll get the answer. Seek and you'll find. Ask and you'll be given. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the doors will be open to you. Jesus said in Revelation 3.20, what did he say? I stand at the door and knock on your door. Will you let me in? Letting him in means you want to become his friend. And I tell you, it's time for people to partner. I command that, you know, wherever this message gets to, that people will join as partners. We're, gonna, we're devising a system where we have a thing that people can do it online, or you can call a number, the number will be on the screen, plus 254-706-164-191. Use that number, that's a direct hotline to the ministry, to this grace and anointing. And, and, and you'll be, send a WhatsApp, send an SMS, whatever, and become a partner. There are partners around the world, people that consistently, even without being reminded, they'll write we have them in Europe, in America, in Asia, and throughout Africa, throughout the world, where they just remember. Now, I, I, I don't want to like, you know, go off on a tangent and act like, you know, talk that, because you think, oh my God, you must have a lot of partners in you. Not enough, not enough. This, maybe that's why the Holy Spirit gave me this. I don't want anybody to think, well, you know, I'm okay by the hand of God. God takes care of me, you understand? You ever hear people sometime on the old days on television, you know, when they took on a big project, a ministry, and then, without your help and support, we can't do what we're doing. What do you mean? You, I, well, I'll never say that. Because I can do what I'm doing by the grace of God. He's the provider. He's the source, yes? I'll never say, without you, I can do nothing. No, Jesus said, 
it, 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 it's a funny thing. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. He didn't say, without any person, you can't do anything. So that's not scriptural to even talk like that. And Jer Jeremiah 17 said what? Uh, don't trust too much in man. It's not good. It could even curse you. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. Thank you, Father. I, 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 was, I was in a meeting and I started t telling this lady, I think, I don't know if she understood what I said. I'll have to clarify it. Sometimes I make statements and people that are a little bit religious and traditional, they don't quite get it. I was trying to explain that, not to say that trusting God is wrong, but, but, but that day it was really in my mind, and I was sharing with, with this person that I admire, uh, who's also a, bus a business person, you have to work the thing that God gave you. So guess what? You, don't, you, you make decisions. I, I made a decision to sow into a conference, and I didn't do it yet, but I'm going to do it. So I've earmarked, what do you call it? earmarked? What, what is it? You, you mark your ear. Uh, what does earmark mean? I mean, what a stupid word. Anyway, the people use, I don't know what it means. Ear, what does the ears have to do with marking something? Well, no, I just made a note that when, I, when God reminds me and I'm just able to do it, I'm going to send an honor seed to this apostle who put on this great conference. But I had committed to it before. In a leaders meeting, breakfast meeting with all the bishops and apostles and pastors and prophets and leaders, that... Uh, evangelists and everybody, when they were talking about putting on this meeting and there was some fundraising going on, who'll do what? And my beloved archbishop uh, did, did this, uh, this thing and they came up with a number about three quarters of a million, you know, just from that few people there. So I got in the midst of that and I said something I'll do. I'm going to do it. And I'm not going to send it through the, through the thing to the ministry. You know what I'm... I decided what I'm going to do. I'm a, I have the apostle's phone number. I'm going to send it direct personally to his phone. And I'm not going to tell him what, it's, what to do with it. Like, this is for the conference. This is for the budget. No, I'm going to say this is an honor seed. Why? Because I want to honor him. Because he's honoring God. And as I, uh, listen to me, as I honor him, it's so honor to him. It doesn't only just spark a greater friendship, which is not wrong. You know, you can give to be friends with it. It doesn't mean you have an agenda a string attached, but when you are blessing to someone, it's a pleasurable experience for them, and they think well of you. That's good, especially when you're dealing with an anointed person. You want to do that. So if I just send it through to the office, the office doesn't care. It's, they're just the accounting people or whatever. Oh, I'm not doing that. I'm sending it direct personally to the phone, and then I'll copy and paste the thing, the message of it, and I'll say, this is an honor seed into you, apostle, because you're a good man. That's great. Yeah. Am I buying something with that? No. I'm sowing into the grace. So this thing about seed is a mystery. We need to catch it. We need to catch it. People need to sow. There are a lot of people that know me and I've been listening over some time and you've never contacted us to say I want to be a partner. And lately I'm putting in all the posts on the Facebook uh, a thing called partnership. I didn't just put partners use this number because then people could think, well, that's just for them. I put partnership because I also want to invite others to come into it. So people need to do that. And then when I see you, guess what? I pray and I think about people and I pray for them. I do all the time. So you, you want to be in, the, in, that, in that inner circle list of people that are, you know, a partner in the ministry. Remember the scriptures on this. Paul said in Philippians 4, 19 to the Philippians who he said were the only ones that really blessed him uh, and others didn't do it but they blessed him and uh, especially you know exceptionally well and said others some others didn't even do anything but he said you ones Philippians that blessed me and took care of me and helped me and helped me get where I was going and sowed into this anointing into this ministry 
I declare that my God, he didn't say your God. He didn't say the blessing's going to happen for you anyway. Do you know, I want to tell you something. It's a little bit strict here. It's a little bit of a stringent way of saying it. People can say, oh my God, you know, that's, that's pretty tight. tight. It's tight, but right. Yeah, it's tight, but it's right. Not everybody qualifies for Philippians 4.19. Someone goes, oh my God, really? Yeah. He said, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. By itself, the verse is powerful. And in fact, if you take it by the mercy of God, you can speak it and use that. God, God won't uh, refuse you that, I'm sure. But look back and read the chapters before from the first chapter of Philippians 2 and 3 and then 4. And Paul said, you guys have communicated with me where, where others didn't. And now I'm going to decree this apostolic prophetic blessing over you. Think about it. So they qualified. They were the ones that he said, my God. He didn't say your God. He said, my God will supply all your needs. And that blessing is coming upon you. Why? Because you're a sower. I was listening to the word last night. <laughs> I listened to so many things. In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm blithering exhausted right now because I didn't even sleep last night. And I preached, I think I slept an hour this morning, which is really not good. But anyway, yeah, I slept about from six to eight, six to eight, like two hours maybe. And I had to jump up and I went to preach at the high school, uh, the State House Boys School, Form 1 to 4, you'd say. If you know where, where we're talking about, you know where that is. And it was packed with these kids. You'll see the video. It was ballistic. They were so receptive. I, I, I never got into, well, I, I've been to a lot of places, but, I, you know, I preach in thousands of meetings probably by now. Not hundreds, thousands. Yeah, that's a fact. Thousands of meetings I've done. Many thousands all over the world. But these kids were switched on. They were so receptive. Boom. So I did that in the morning. And... Um, but I heard God, I heard God so clearly. Anyway, you'll see the video, it's coming up. And we went to the, the primary school for all the girls. There was about 2,000 girls there, and I prayed a prophetic prayer over them. The presence of heaven fell on them. It happened today in this other meeting. Oh, my God. So we're going to minister to the next generation. I'm excited about it. I'm excited about blessing all the children. I'm excited about blessing all the youth and get, getting to the, the message to them. And the, there was only one thing that I would desire to speak about that I felt led to the Lord, but it was, to me it was an obvious thing, to talk about success and becoming successful in life and to know the call of God that each person has. That's all I was going to talk about. I said, that's what you need to know, number one. All you guys, you need to know this. What is your mission in life? And then that God wants you to be very successful. And I prophesied over them. Success, blessing, being raised up. And then the third thing you could say would be to, to get trained, to, te to get taught, to learn, to do well, Isaiah 117. And then uh, 18, come let us reason together. In other words, <laughs> Have conversations and learn even more. Get more wisdom. And then when you're obedient to the call of God, then you'll eat the good of the land. That doesn't mean to live in poverty and to be backwards and, you know, stuck and messed up. That happens because of evil environments and evil people and all that. But everybody can get past that if they'll obey God. So that's what I spoke about. What's more important than that? Nothing. Nothing. And then, the, and then the fourth thing we did, fourth or fifth thing, I prayed, prayed the, the, uh, the evangelists came back to close the meeting, and I was good, and then they had me jump right in, and I led them all to the Lord. And I said, well, if you're saved, you get saved again. You know, make sure we make, we make double show you're all saved. And all of them said the prayer, shouted it aloud, excited. You could see the Holy Spirit touching people. And a fifth thing, back, we should probably be number, yeah, number one 
actually it was. That the Lord would visit people. Number one, that they would become very successful. Number two, they would be uh, to know the calling and that the Holy Spirit would touch them to lead them in the way they should go. To have, uh, to become very powerful people and they were, they were so receptive. Oh my God. So we want to do more of that. What do we need? Millions of dollars. We're going to hit cities of the world. We need to get our aircraft. We need to move. We need to uh, have, have television time going across satellites all over the earth to multiply millions of people. What is that? So when people partner with all these, and we need to do documentaries for television for all, all the prophecies that I've delivered over certain nations, especially this one particular one nation. And, and uh, people are asking for it. And we do all that and get that done. That all takes resources and the teams and the staff and the equipment and all of that. The buildings and the land and the equipment and the studio and then to travel and to do everything. So that's where people's money is going when they connect with this grace. They're helping all the vision of God come to pass. And one thing I'll tell you this in the realm of partnership, when you get passionate and excited and involved with fulfilling God's dream, God will get passionate and excited and involved with helping you fulfill yours. Amen. Let's pray again. Father, thank you for the touch of heaven. Let new partners arise. And you, pray, you pray with me and for me, and I'll, I'll be praying with you and for you. But people need to connect with the anointing. When you connect with the anointing, I'm telling you, just something happens that doesn't happen any other way. And God wants to promote people. He wants to empower people. He wants to raise them up. He wants them to become giants. I said that to these kids, the first thing I said. You, God wants you to be a giant. They all shouted amen and screamed. Yes. Pe people are sharp. People are not... People are not not everybody's uh, got rocks in their head. You know, I've seen a few along the way. They're very irritating. And some of them we just can't hang, can't hang, can't hang. Can't hang with people that are useless in situations. We need the useful, amen? And I'm on the hunt for the dream team. So more people, how does that happen? You meet more people by uh, more exposure out there in the world. There's no impact without contact. You connect. Contacting people, the more people see you, the more people can relate with you. And partnership makes all that happen. So uh, God is good anyway. He makes things to happen. But people need to get blessed by being involved and connected with the anointing. And I speak fire over every person right now that's ever done anything good for this work, for this servant of God, Thomas Matthew IV. And if it, it's something divine happened along the way, you need to reciprocate. Now, the scripture also says, I'm seeing it right now in a vision. Right now, I'm seeing this. The scripture that says, they that give you their spiritual things should reap your natural things. Why did God, think about it, why did God put that in the scripture? Because, because the man of God is carrying the anointing to give to people, but then he needs things... <laughs> to live on this earth for the work, personally, for things to happen in every way. Uh, and the people, by scriptural principle, are responsible to cause that to become a reality. By giving, as we would say, giving, yes? Sowing, S-O-W-I-N-G. So, the good sower sows. And the scripture says, God will give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So if God knows you, you will sow, he will give you seed. When you sow into a grace, you'll reap from that grace. When you sow, you'll grow. You, you sow also to where on something of somewhere you want to go, so where you want to go, and God will help you get there. Can you say amen? 
So we're giving out. And you know, the scripture says that the, the one who, who works in the field shouldn't be frustrated. You know, they should receive freely. Again, the, like I, I wanted to say this, there's people we've blessed and they've been treacherous in their disdain and dishonor and abuse and uh, they just have a nature of taking, stealing. I don't know what they do. They, they don't show honor. They don't, uh, not, they don't show any friendship. But maybe they're competitive or some are even jealous of you know, what you're carrying and all that. That's a bunch of nonsense. Those people, God helped them. Uh, and, and, and we, we prayed for the best for everybody, are uh, not partners. Partners are people that are endeared to the vision and to the servant of God and to the anointing. And they're like, I want to be a part of this. There are many people watching. Now, I was saying these tags that you'll see will have information on how to sow into this grace by uh, the apps, you know, to the phone, to the number, 706-164-191, plus 254-706-164-191. You'll see that there. PayPal, uh, another one that people wanted to use, Western Union, the money grant, but now even those apps have applications that can go to the m system, to the phone number. SendWave, World Remit. If you want to do a bank wire transfer or, or you want to uh, do something from your bank, then you contact, send a direct message and say, I have this seed I want to sow. The number works. We're there. Use the phone number. WhatsApp us, SMS us, call us. We will talk to you and we'll be glad to pray for you as you're sowing into this grace. Become a partner. It is an awesome thing. I wonder if I even wrote in this book something on partnership. I may, I may or may not have. If not, I need to make another book on that. Ooh, it's before the pictures. There's pictures in the middle. Wow, I have another book to write. It's not there. But this book on success, the principles in this book are phenomenal. I have another book. It's called The Laws of Success. Another book called The Focus Factor, another book called The Benefits of Excellence, many, many books. And these are going to go to reprint. They're all sold out. And big prophecies, major prophecies for the nation of Kenya. Oh, we have those. All of those books were sold out, but they're, they're available. We're in the process of doing. And uh, we're going to blanket the earth with his word in Jesus' name. Now, the thing about giving, when you give, you're really giving to yourself. You're taking something from your hand and planting it into the soil, and then the soil is growing the thing back, and it's multiplying. God doesn't give you back what you gave. He, you could sow a seed, you get back a tree. You could sow a seeds, seeds that make trees, and you get back a, a what was you call a forest. You know, many things multiplied. God doesn't throw it back at you the way you gave it sometimes. He'll give you, you plant it right, you'll increase. So you, you, you sow, you go like this, I'm planting, but my other hand is open waiting for the harvest to come back. I'm reminded of a man that gave a very expensive luxury car to somebody. And uh, he said within days he had an even better one. So the blessing pot, and the harvest on that seed is also moving in his life, but a better car than even the one he gave popped right back to him. So this thing works. Be a giver if you want to be, <laughs> make sure, <laughs> be a person who does good giving if you want to have a good living. Can you say Amen. So I command people right now in the name of Jesus. You're watching this right now. You've not done anything. I don't care if it's something small. Prove yourself to God and even to me that you're serious about a connection or relationship, whatever you want to call it. Partnership, ministry partnership. And I'll be praying for you that the Lord bless you so mightily. 
You'll have many testimonies for me in Jesus' name. So be it. The information is there again on the screen. And our announcer is coming on to you to talk about what it means to partner with the prophet and some details on that. So the Lord bless you, keep you, make his face to shine upon you, give you his peace, but also give you his power and his prosperity, his favor, his blessing that makes us rich and has no sorrow. The Lord bless you. I'm Thomas Matthew Ford. Looking forward to hearing from you. Become a partner today. Do it right away. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm waiting to hear from you. Dear brethren, in Psalms 119, 105, the Bible says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Truly, God has sent prophet Dr. Thomas Manton IV to proclaim and declare his word of abundance and prosperity prophetically unto the nations. Thus, brothers and sisters in Christ, I urge you, just as the Bible says in Matthew 10, 41, whoever welcomes a prophet, as a prophet will receive a prophet reward. Let us welcome and embrace the prophet of God by supporting his ministry. You can sow a seed, you can send your love offering, you can support or partner in the ministry program using the details displayed on your screen. For when the prophet of God decrees a blessing upon you, indeed, you shall be blessed.